This presentation will address identifying priority health issues in Australia. Quick look at the syllabus. It's important to notice there are five key aspects or factors to consider when identifying priority health issues, and they include social justice principles, priority population groups, prevalence of condition, potential for prevention and early intervention, and costs to the individual and the community. We're going to answer a range of questions, but basically we're going to learn about how we identify priority health issues, the role of social justice, and why is it important to prioritise. Now, Australia is one of the healthiest countries in the world. However, there are still a number of health problems that the population experiences. The challenge for the Australian government is to allocate a limited amount of resources to address these health problems. And this means priorities need to be established. So, currently we have nine national health priority areas. And they include cardiovascular disease, cancer, injury, mental health, diabetes, asthma, arthritis and musculoskeletal disorders, obesity and dementia. Now, the Australian government has chosen to use a framework of priority health issues to achieve this. Epidemiology plays an important role. However, issues such as social justice, potential for prevention and costs are important in identifying these priority issues. Now, the Australian government has agreed that the nine health priority areas pose significant challenges to Australia. Each area has placed a significant burden on Australian society over a number of years. So the government says, let's prioritise. So they do so by educating, by conducting further research, allocating funding, delivering campaigns to the community, developing new technology, and attempting to empower the community to take control of their own health. Now, determining priorities and health spending is very, very challenging. Different people in the community take different perspectives, but the Australian government has determined that along with epidemiology, the following considerations are important, and this can be used as a criteria. So the government will consider social justice principles, priority population groups, prevalence of condition, potential for prevention and early intervention, and costs to the individual and the community. Now, the first part in the five-point criteria is social justice. Now, social justice principles include participation, equity, access, and rights. And these are particularly important because social justice means that the rights of all people in our community are considered in a fair and equitable manner. So it's all about fairness. Now, when we think about participation, it's all about empowering communities to act or involving the community to address their own health needs. Now, a great example of this is the national tobacco campaign, Break the Chain Initiative, which involves Indigenous uh, people in the community trying to convince other Indigenous people to quit smoking, to reduce the prevalence of CBD and cancer in the population. So this particular campaign involves Indigenous people. It empowers them. It encourages them to go and speak to their other relatives and try to change their behaviours. So this is a great example of participation. There are many others out there. I encourage you to do some research. Equity involves the fair allocation of resources and entitlements without discrimination. And there are two types to consider. Vertical equity is providing health resources to those groups that need it most, such as the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander group. And horizontal equity involves providing resources across the population equally. Now, the Close the Gap initiative is, is implemented by the Australian government to try to reduce the life expectancy gap, the infant mortality gap, increase access to early childhood education, improve literacy and numeracy levels, and improve Year 12 attainment levels, and also improve employment in the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander community. So this is a great example of vertical equity because a number of resources and extra funding has been applied to try to bring the level of Indigenous health up to the same level as the rest of the population. So that's vertical equity. Horizontal equity is about spreading resources across the entire population so that everybody has access. And a great example is Medicare, Australia's universal health insurance scheme. This is funded through the Medicare levy or, or tax, which is a 2% levy pay, placed on the taxable income of all Australians that, that work. Now, Medicare levy surcharge 
comes into place when a person earns more than $88,000. So clearly the whole population is contributing to this and this allows for access to health resources regardless of someone's circumstances. And that's horizontal equity. It's providing an opportunity for the entire population. Now access includes the availability of health services, information and education. So this is people acquiring or accessing services, hospitals and so on. Now it could be including more doctors in rural areas so that people can get checkups more regularly to reduce the cardiovascular disease uh, prevalence in those areas. The, the Royal Flying Doctor Service is another example of providing services to those that live in very remote areas. Again, increasing access to services. Medicare also increases access to services because you can then see a doctor using your Medicare card to get a checkup. It could also be increasing access through media. So campaigns spread across the community through television, through social media. It also could be providing messages in different language so that people of different um, nationalities can access these messages as well. So that's what access is all about. And providing more access can actually educate people. It can allow people to get more checkups and so on. And this can reduce the prevalence of some diseases. Rights is the fourth social justice principle, and this is about an entitlement to health care or basic education. And Medicare, again, provides that right. Every person has the right to go and access uh, their local GP. Uh, there's also a Commonwealth Seniors Health Card, which, again, allows more access to those of the elderly community. So it provides equitable opportunities for all individuals to achieve good health. So if the Australian government believes that a health issue can be controlled by addressing the social justice principles of participation, equity, access, and rights, then the issue will be made a priority.